everybody. Uh, my name is Glenn Madden, and uh, this talk is called The Z Dimension. Um, I'm basically going to talk about uh, browsers and GIFs uh, for this talk. Um, I called it the Z Dimension because it's a little bit more interesting than just talking about browsers. But that's really what we all have to understand if we want to know how depth works. So the thing about browsers that you need to remember, or that you need to know if you want to understand how they draw things, is that they paint. And what I mean is that they use a thing called the painter's algorithm. The painter's algorithm means that if you want to draw something in front of something else, you draw it afterwards. You you paint the uh, mountains before you paint the fields before you paint the, the houses, which is a back-to-front algorithm. The thing that's important is that the browser paints every element independently, right? which kind of means that for a browser, there is no Z dimension. There is just order. There is only order. There's no depth. So that's kind of why this is a bit challenging and why sometimes it's hard to reason about. So this is all covered by this spec, which I know that all of us have memorized, because we all had to for our you know, web developer license exam, right? Uh, but in case you're a little bit rusty, I will just sort of skip over it. There's about a 1,000 words here. This is an appendix, and it has the word elaborate in it. <laughs> OK. Um, so let's talk about some divs, right? Simple stuff, A, B, C, D. C and D are inside A. You might think that, well, you know, C and D are on the same level. They could be drawn together and A and B are at the same level, they'll probably be drawn at the same time. Uh, you'd be wrong, quite wrong. And this comes to my first pro tip for understanding how browsers are rendering things, which is that box shadow is a wonderful friend. Uh, box shadow can change the way a, a element is rendered without changing its order at all. So if you add this little CSS thing, you get a nice thing, which is basically saying, if I hover anything, uh, draw a big, big, uh, black box shadow. So now you can add this in. I've got a little Chrome snippet to add this to any web page. If you're trying to understand how they've composited it, this can be a really easy way. You can see that B, the B is the highest thing. D is higher than C. C is higher than A. And you may not have realized. You might think that you know A and B are drawn first, and then C and D are drawn afterwards. But it's actually what they call tree order. It's in the document's order. And that, so even when you're not using anything fancy, the browser is still treating it as if you've added depth. But of course, it's a lot more complicated. Um, I changed the color of the text. That's all I've done. But now we can actually see that the text has always been rendering last. The text wasn't rendered with its parent. Text is uh, treated separately. And we can uh, confirm that actually any inline element is drawn above any block element, and text is an inline element. Uh, so I can hear everyone thinking, well, well, what about floats? Well, floats, you might think they float, so they're on the top, but no, they're in between. So they're halfway between blocks and inline, which is cool. If you add a position, obviously, that goes to the top, unless you add a negative z index, in which case it goes all the way to the bottom, or a positive one, in which case it goes all the way to the top. And I think it might be a good point to introduce this GIF <laughs> here. Because I don't want to be critical. <laughs> but, and this may be the simplest way that you can do everything a browser can do. But there is some complexity here, right? There is some stuff that you have to know. And this is just a recap. But basically, I'm not going to dwell on all of these rules because it gets more complicated. The reason you don't see text magically appearing on the top of stuff in the browser is because usually when you lay something out on top of another in a browser, you introduce what's called a stacking context. So a stacking context is like an encapsulation, a part of the DOM that's drawn together. And it's, uh, it sort of flattens it, right? It sort of makes it appear like it was one thing, and it, it looks like you've got control over it. Well, basically, what's happening is an element and its children are being drawn together in this, in this global order. So I can show you that here, right? I've got that negative uh, uh, div just hanging at the bottom there, and if I change its parent, which is A, from Z index auto to Z index zero, it, pum it comes to the front, right? And so the only thing I did was change something Z index auto, and which is kind of semantically Z index zero anyway, uh, to explicitly zero, and suddenly it's changed because it can't be drawn outside its parent anymore because now it's got a stacking context. Um, 
And my reaction was this, basically, when I started to understand all of this stuff that's happening and I didn't, I didn't know, and then it started to break, and then, then I got very sad. There are lots of ways these things get, get, sorry, lots of ways these things get created. But again, I'm not going to dwell on it. What I am going to say is that it used to be the case that you had no option but to just learn this stuff and then, you know, theorize and try and figure out how how it's not working. You know, what point of the tree have you introduced a stacking context? Why is this thing coming in there and not somewhere else? Um, thankfully, you have a new option. So rather than concentrate on specifics, I'm going to talk about tools. I'm going to talk about what you can do to reason about this stuff so that you don't get trapped. And I'm just going to take a moment to say that Chrome is really, really good. And it's changing all the time, and it's getting better and better. I'm going to do a demo using Canary with a couple of flags. Now, these flags are magic, and you just need to copy paste them. I did. Um, but basically, what that means is I've got this. I've got this example here, which is our example from just from before. Negatives now on top, positives all the way up there, right? Still the hover, everything's fine. If I go to a URL called Chrome Tracing, I get a little record button and a little smiley face. But I get a little record button. I'm going to pick two of these things, CC and CC debug. There are a lot more, but this is a short talk. And hit record. I'm going to go across here. I'm just going to refresh, and I'll stop tracing. And now I've collected telemetry about what my browser has done, which is pretty cool. The thing I'm interested in here is a thing called CC picture. Hopefully, everyone can see it up there. But there's a little green dot, and that green dot has recorded everything my browser has done, every decision it made to draw something to the screen. If you ever wanted a real point of truth, this is it. The cool thing is, it A gives me uh, performance characteristics, which things were most expensive, but it gives me a recording of everything that was drawn in order. So as crazy as that specification is, suddenly you don't need to keep it all in your head. If you get to the point where something is drawing, you don't understand why, suddenly you've got some context with which to Google things. And that's pretty cool. I really like this. But again, it gets more complicated. Of course it does. Jeez. Um, layers is an, are the next thing. Layers are like super stacking context, right? Stacking context, I talk about it being flattened and being part of the DOM and, and sort of uh, feeling like it was a, a, a unit. Well, a layer is a real unit. A layer is rendered by itself, uh, just like anything else, but then it's shipped off to the uh, GPU as a separate layer. And that means that you can do things with it that the CPU is very bad at and the GPU is very good at. The bad news is it's not very clear when it will happen uh, and sometimes why. <laughs> so I'm going to do another demo which starts to talk about layers. Right? Got another tab here, and I believe I have the Example right here. Um, I've got rid of our little box shadow thing, and now I just do a little transition, right? Just moves left and right. And I'm animating that by changing the CSS property right. Now, if you know, uh, if you've done a lot of you know, front end performance stuff, you know that animating properties like right are slow, but you may not know exactly why. So let's go back to our old friend, which is tracing. We go record, refresh, hover, unhover. You might have looked at the, you know, the timeline tab and seen all these paints happen. But what this is actually showing you is exactly what is, what is happening. So you've got all of these paints happening uh, for each frame. At the top here, that is every frame that's sort of sent to the screen. And each of them have a frame that the browser is actually compositing. Right? So this is where the performance starts to, start to come in. What's cool, though, is this gives us a little view. We can go in there, and we can see it animating. We can kind of replay what's going on. Jump across here. Uh, and again, we've got our drawing from before. I've clicked on the picture thing. But what's interesting now is as it animates, it has to keep redrawing this section. You can see every little bit that the browser has done to try and, uh, to try and animate it. So I'm going to change the property very slightly, and we'll see what happens. Right? We'll see how things change. All I've done now is use translate x instead of uh, animating the right property. Right? I've kept everything else the same. I haven't put anything else in except that this is now, it, what, what was it? It was right, and now it's translate x. So if I go to this one, 
I go to this one, I record, I record, I click, I refresh, I hover, I unhover, I stop. OK, now we've see, we can see that most of our paints have gone away, right? And if we want to understand what's happening, we can click here, and we can do something kind of cool, which is that we can, ref we can rotate this view of the DOM and see that as it animates, suddenly our little div just pops into the sky and, and moves across the DOM and then jumps back onto the div when it's done, right? And then pops up again and gets animated. So every time that somebody tells you you should animate X and not Y, this is probably what's happening. The, the, Chrome is actually saying, hey, hey, I can do this. I'll just pop it up, send it to the GPU. The GPU will send it across, and then it'll snap down. Right? And then there's one layer, right? There's one more level that we go to, which is where this thing comes in. Translate 3D, 0, 0, 0. I'm sure people have used it. I've used it a lot, and I didn't understand it then. So I imagine that other people are the same. But if you want to know what that's happening, that's actually telling the browser that this is a layer, this is worth drawing by itself. I'm going to move it. I'm going to do something with it. Just, just trust me. Do the work up front. Refresh, hover, hover, stop. And now all of our paints have gone away. Right? We have one paint at the beginning, and that's that. Right? All of these updates don't cause paints. And so that's really good news for, for um, transitions. The other thing is that right from the get-go, we have this extra layer. Right, right from the get-go, this extra dimension has been introduced. What's also cool is that now, to start with, we've drawn it without it. We've drawn our entire DOM without this thing. And there's another paint in there somewhere there, which is the other layer. So it's completely separated our app. It's almost like web components, but for visual components, right? They're totally separate. If the browser realizes that you've converted them or you've taken the property that has introduced that thing, uh, it will, um, it, it'll change your layers. And so trying to understand why layers are created, um, trying to know when they're created is, is quite tricky. But now at least you can verify that they have been. So all of these things will create a layer. I mean, some of these are pretty simple, like uh, 3D transforms, obviously. Anything that needs GPU acceleration, like a video or canvas plugin. Uh, CSS filters are all accelerated these days. Uh, but importantly, the last thing means that if you start using stacking context, if you start introducing lots of these layers, but you make the bottom one uh, a GPU layer, then everything underneath is going to be a, a GPU as well, uh, layer as well. Um, what that means is that you can end up with a lot of these things. And keeping track of them is, is pretty important. The, the important point is that like, this has always been complicated. It's still complicated, but the tooling's getting a lot better. And so I'm going to show you one thing which is really, really fresh. If you go into Chrome Canary right now, um, ooh, that's not where I'm supposed to look, and enable developer tools experiments, then when you open uh, developer tools, you can show a layers panel. So all of this stuff that we saw, let's just full screen that, all that stuff we saw that we were recording and, and browsing through is now being folded into a real-time view of your browser's Z dimension, effectively. So as I change these slides, this is my presentation. As I change these slides, I'm fading in opacity, and it's creating, hopefully you can see that, it's creating these layers, creating quite a few of them sometimes. And what's interesting, oh god, what's interesting is that it's really fresh and it breaks all the time. <sighs> Let's do it again. Whoa, there's a few layers on that one. Jeez. All right, so yeah, no, I, you know, this came out since I did my slides. So, um, and you can see the way this is doing these things. And what's interesting though, if I get to here, I can click it, and it will tell me the browser is now reporting why this has happened. So I can start to debug the internals of this browser and start to take control. Of, of what's happening. And so it's, it's very, very important for performance if you're trying to do fancy things. So these are my three kind of uh, pro tips for navigating the Z dimension. Box shadow is really handy. I mean, uh, you'd be surprised just how good that little snippet is. Um, tracing is amazing if you really need to you know, dig into it. If you ever have a deep question, it should be your first place to get real data. And the layers panel, if it doesn't crash uh, when you try to use it, is, is 
is brilliant. And I think that is that. Thank you very much.